Hello everyone and welcome back. Yesterday's video I talked about the difference between incapacity and incompetence. Incapacity being part of the civil guardianship process and incompetence being part of the criminal process. Now the sort of third leg of this is insanity and insanity is a defense that's raised throughout uh, the criminal justice system when you know that's an appropriate affirmative defense so here in florida we have what's known as the mcnaughton rule and the mcnaughton rule is what we call an affirmative defense when i was prosecutor and i'm going to talk to you about a case that i handled way back when um, i think when i was a prosecutor i think we still had horses and buggies but that's another conversation but this was a this is an affirmative defense um and it's frankly been a while since I even looked up the insanity, but let me, I'm going to read this. This is what I, I have in my notes here about insanity. Florida's insanity defense is a legal argument that a defendant should not be held criminally responsible for their actions due to a mental illness. Surprise, surprise, right? Mental illness at the time of the crime to use the insanity defense. The defendant must prove by clear and convincing evidence that one, they had a mental disease defect or infirmity Two, because of this condition, they did not know what they were doing or its consequences. And three, because of the condition, they did not know that what they were doing was wrong. So um, let me give you an example. So one of the last cases I handled, in fact, this may have been the last case I actually tried and prosecuted. And this would have been probably in 1999. As I said, I'm, I go back a ways. Um, and here's the, here's the story. We had... Um, uh, a girlfriend, a boyfriend, uh, the victim in the case was the girlfriend and she was, I think she was in her mid-twenties, her and the boyfriend had actually met in the military, they both served in the army and when she got out, as many of our veterans do, she decided that she wanted a career in law enforcement and um, while she was in the police academy, due to the fact that this guy was abusive, she just had enough and couldn't take it anymore and told him she was done with him. Well, one night while she was in 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 the police academy, she came out of her class. I think it was around five or six o'clock, and he attacked her with a huge steak knife. I mean, I mean, a, a very large blade. Okay, and he attacked her. Fortunately, the um, the instructor and some of the cadets saw what was happening, saw that he had attacked her and was stabbing her. Um, and they they basically intervened and grabbed him and dragged him off of her, not before she got seriously injured, but he didn't kill her. And he was charged with attempted first-degree murder. So his defense was insanity. So that's an affirmative defense that the defense raises to basically say, uh, members of the jury, I'm not guilty of the allegations made against me by the state because I was insane at the time. Now, in order to prove the insanity defense, remember, it talks about clear and convincing evidence, which, by the way, is a civil burden of proof, not a criminal burden of proof. In order to raise that defense, they needed an expert. And the expert came in and testified this person was insane. Now, that doesn't mean to say that he lacked capacity, which, as you know, from the guardianship process can be over a period of time. Right. I mean, most of our guardianship cases go on for about a year. Same with incompetence. When somebody's declared incompetent in the criminal in the criminal situation, it's very rare that that's you know a thirty sixty day process. It's normally you know potentially six months or longer. Well, insanity deals with a very narrow period of time, and in fact, what they're saying is that at that moment that the the, the state believes he formed the intent and actually tried to commit the crime, he was insane. He didn't know what he was doing. He was out of his mind. He didn't even realize what he was doing was wrong. Now, I will tell you that in that particular case, uh, the jury didn't believe he, he met the, 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 the criteria for the insanity defense, and they convicted him. And I, and I sort of made a promise to, to, the, to the victim in the case, who was a very sweet young lady. I said, look, this is going to be the last case I'm going to try as a prosecutor. I'm leaving the office, but I'm going to do the best I can to nail this guy so that you never have to worry about this ever again. And I did. Um, and he went away to prison for a very long time. It's probably out by now anyway. But in any event... That was a case where there was an insanity defense. But again, that has to do with the criminal justice system. So incapacity, guardianship, competence, insanity, all sort of various uh, issues to deal with mental illness. But this one's in the criminal justice system. And I wanted to just take a, do these two videos just to sort of explain the difference. Because we've been getting a lot of calls for people saying, oh, my loved one's been declared incompetent. Can you get him out? Well, if we can... 
and I don't handle criminal cases anymore, but if, if you can get somebody out, it has to be addressed through the criminal system. And I, and you know, yesterday I raised the idea of potentially filing for guardianship over somebody who's in the criminal system. And I think that, that brings up various challenges, but I discussed it with, with Audra, who's my wife and law partner, who is the guru of guardianship. I mean, she's the one that came up with the brilliant idea of using guardianship, a statute that really had been used for elderly people about 10 years ago said, we can, why don't we start using it for our cases where you've got young people who need, who need help and the parents need more control of an out of control situation. And I said to Audra, what do you think? Is there any restriction on us filing for guardianship over somebody who is in the criminal system? And she said, I don't think there's any prohibition against it. But, but again, I think we're going to have to go back into the criminal system because the criminal, the state's right to prosecute somebody criminally for a, an alleged crime is going to trump the parents' rights, even if they become the legal guardians, to make uh, medical decisions for their loved one. And so I think even if we can get guardianship, and I I don't think it's, it, it's an impossible hurdle to overcome, we're going to need to go back to the criminal court and say, Your Honor, mom and dad have guardianship, and we'd like to exercise the rights of the guardian, but within the constraints of the criminal system. Obviously, if you're dealing with somebody who is potentially very dangerous, it's my opinion that, that I don't think the criminal court's going to let us do what we need to do, potentially in the guardianship case in terms of getting the person out and putting them into treatment. It's going to have to be some type of potential confinement. So anyway, I appreciate you uh, tuning in. And actually, my marketing people have told me to tell you this very, very important thing. If you could like this video and subscribe to the channel, that would really help me, and I'd be very grateful. And with that said, see you in the next video. Bye-bye.